Simpson gets it away. Cedric Cox gathers, has a bounce, sizes oh, them yeah. up. He was bad late. It's a goal. He goal. has still drilled it. Cedric Cox, what a goal for your first goal in league footy. Hacked out of defence by Carlton. Cedric Cox from 50. Oh. Belton as he kicks one of the goals of the year. Cedric Cox, you beauty. Carlton clear, but it's coming back off here. Here's Cox from 52. Bumped as he kicks. Well, and he's kicked the goal. Oh, look at the Lions get around the young man. Here's Cox, though. Has a bounce within about two metres of grabbing the foot. He's collected afterwards. It's down oh. the field, but it doesn't oh. matter. He's slotted it through from the anchor man of pocket. And well done to young Cedric Cox. His first goal in AFL footy. And what a ripper. That's not one he's likely to forget in a hurry. We'll take our Lions theme here because uh, the AFL's National Inclusion Carnival has begun tonight on the Gold Coast. We've got our own reporter on the spot. He's the Brisbane Lions captain, Dane Beams. Dane, welcome to AFL 360. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Tell us, uh, tell us about this. You're an ambassador for it. What is it? Yeah, so it's the National uh, Disability um, Inclusion Carnival. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's basically all kids from 16 to, I think, about 54 um, with intellectual disabilities. Um, there are a few guys with uh, physical disabilities, but mainly uh, all of them have got intellectual disabilities. So it's the first year that it's been in Queensland on the Gold Coast. Um, I think Queensland and Vic Country currently playing at the moment, and I think Queensland last time I looked were winning, so... <laughs> That doesn't happen very often, but um, yeah, it's a fa fantastic initiative um, done through the AFL, AFL Queensland, that um, gives these kids a chance, and not only kids, but um, I just spoke to a guy that was 53 years old, so <laughs> um, there's a wide range of ages and it gives them a chance to um, be able to enjoy um, our great game. It's close to home for you. What's the family connection? Yeah, so my wife, who I've now been with for six years, uh, has a brother who has Down syndrome. Uh, and, yeah, he's, he's always been into his sport. Uh, he loves Richmond. Um, but he's someone that I obviously met when I met Kelly. And, uh, and I'm at, oh, I can be a grumpy, grumpy man at times. But uh, whenever I felt like that, when, particularly when I was living in Melbourne, um, I'd always go around there. And he was someone that always um, would put a smile on my face. He's, he's quite an extrovert. Um, you find a lot of guys with Down syndrome, they're either really introverted or extroverted, and Mark's certainly uh, an extrovert. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's got a really close relationship with Kelly and I, and um, I remember when I was uh, yeah, living, with Mel living in Melbourne, um, he used to play for the Ringwood Spiders, and uh, he, he really enjoyed his footy. And um, the thing that he enjoyed most of all was being able just to be a part of something and feel like uh, he was a part of a group. So um, this is the opportunity that these guys get with this, in with this carnival. Well, we've been sitting here, uh, we've seen a few highlights from the evening's activity so far. So it's obviously a lot of fun, there's great enthusiasm, but there's a fair amount of skill from what we can tell as well. Yeah, a few of them can play. Um, and they, they'll all tell you that they can play as well, <laughs> they're really confident kids. Um, but yeah, like they're, they're able to go out there and compete against one another and um, it's great. There's a, there's a fair, fair little crowd out here and um, they're all cheering them on. So, yeah, it's great for these uh, yeah, kids and, and also uh, adults to be able to enjoy themselves and, and, like I said, play our game because, you know, it's a game for everyone. Hey, Dane, we, we watch all you guys get drafted as young men and we wonder where you're going to end up and how, how good of a footballer you're going to be. And I reckon when we're watching you at Collingwood... Probably some would think that you might not go on to be a captain and a national ambassador for such a such a great cause. How have you found your growth as a person and your growth in football over the last five years? Yeah, Rob. Look, I'm always someone that's um, I'm I'm big on you know you make mistakes that um, you never make the same mistake twice and. You know, I've made a fair few mistakes early, particularly early on in my career, and um, you know, I let a lot of people down. Um, most of, and, and most of all, I let my family down in certain situations. And uh, I guess for me, it's all it's all about just maturing as a person. And uh, you know, I've 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 learnt some hard lessons over the time, but um, I've had some great people around me, also some great leaders that have 
uh, pulled me into line when they needed to. And I think I think the biggest thing for me is I've just matured. Um, and, and I think you can't really buy time, but that's been the biggest thing for me. I, I've just you know gotten a little bit older. Uh, I'm married now with a with our first Kelly and I had our first daughter um, in September of last year. So. Yeah, it's it sort of forces you to grow up a little bit having a child. I, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but um, and and I, and I think being captain, it's something that I never I never thought of um, when I was at Collingwood. Um, but I guess as I got to Brisbane, um, I think that's when I did mature probably the most. Um, obviously, with the, with the move and um, having my daughter and. Um, just being around a group of guys that are so young, it, it sort of forced me to be that sort of uh, mature head within the group. And um, I'm really enjoying the role. Um, I love watching our young group develop. Um, it gives me the most pleasure because I know that they're the ones that are going to take the club forward. I want to get everyone's rap for you. And I, I didn't ask that question for you to sort of rehash, you know, your younger days. I was more interested in at 27 years of age, Dan, and we watch you play football and we watch you... And you've had a couple of injuries, but we watch you play football and your football hasn't dropped off and your leadership has really shone through. And at 27, it feels like you've been around for a long, long time, but at the same stage at 27, you've probably got another, hopefully, seven, eight years in football in front of you. Yeah, well, the last, the last three years in particular have gone bloody slow for me because I've just been injured all the time. Um, so I, I hope you're right. I hope I do have another, you know, five, six years left in me. I feel like my body's um, getting better with each game that I play now. Um, it is a maintenance, an ongoing maintenance thing that I, you know, I'm going to have to be aware of for the rest of my career and I'm going to have to be really diligent with. But, uh, you know, as, as long as I can keep that intact, I, I feel like my aerobic capacity and uh, my skill level hasn't dropped off. So I'm feeling comfortable within the game. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to be around for this group uh, when this group does... Um, start to become really, really competitive again in the competition because it's exciting. Um, you know, you guys are probably seeing little bits and pieces of it in Melbourne, but um, I get to, you know, train with these guys every day and play with them and train with them. And, um, yeah, they're, they're all willing to learn and they're, they've got some really uh, good skill sets and um, they've got real uh, level heads and they're mature and um, I think they're going to be the ones that really take our club forward. I know the Brisbane Lion fans, they get frustrated and disappointed and they talk about patience. I suspect that the players also get frustrated, frustrated knowing that they can do some really good things, but being young, you can't put it together. So when it does come together like it did last week and you're able to go out and have a good lead and then hold off a, a Carlton coming at you and then going again, what does that do for the group? Oh, it builds confidence. Um, you know, as a, as a group, we're looking at... You're sort of growing as a group and that's the mindset that we come into training with each day, a growth mindset. So I think the wins are, at the moment are the icing on the cake. Um, we know there's a process that we need to go through to be able to win consistently. Um, and I think the big thing that you get with younger guys is inconsistencies. Um, so you're going to get games like on the weekend where we, where we can put it together and um, where we can put out really good performances. And then there's going to be other times, unfortunately, where... Um, things might not just click and these young guys are just having a bad day and um, we're going to have those sorts of bad bad results. Um, but, you know, as, as they get older and they get more experience and they play more league footy, they're going to be all on out and I think we'll become a lot more consistent. Um, you know, Fags and Nobs have come in this year and they've got us going in a really good direction and we know uh, the direction that we're heading in. Uh, we know it's going to take a little bit of time, um, but I think we can surprise a few along the way. I think we can um, turn things around quicker than, you know, maybe some people may think. Everyone will say they want Tom Rockliffe to stay, but why do you personally want Tom Rockliffe to stay? Because <laughs> he's a very good footballer. <laughs> um, yeah, look, oh, Tom's, Tom's had a great year. Um, He's had a few issues with his shoulder of late, but um, up until he got injured, he was you know, the leading clearance player in the competition. So when you've got someone like that and then you combine them with um, you know, a Reese Matheson, a Hugh McCluggage, a Jared Berry, they're guys that are vital to your, to your growth and the development of the younger guys. So um, we desperately want Tom to stay. Um, obviously, it's out of our control, but you know, as, the, as the captain of the footy club, I'd love him to stay because he's so important for these younger guys to rise up. Dane, it's great to have a chance to chat and uh, the very best of luck to all those who are involved in the AFL's National Inclusion Carnival and good luck for the rest of your season.
Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Dane Beams with us from the Gold Coast. Coming up next, the greatest, and fitting in with the theme of the week, the multicultural marvels, the great ones of all time, to be counted down on the greatest. Back up,